We're on the clock now with one minute as a group to handle the following topic. So first up, is this going to be a yearly spat? Senate Finance Committee Chair John Arthur Smith says the early childhood education amendment proposed by Michael Sanchez doesn't have the votes, won't get a hearing in his committee. So let's listen and get his reaction. Neither, neither amendment right now has the votes to get out of the Senate Finance Committee. Um, will you continue to watch those to see if the votes evolve or, or if the legislation, if you see a proposed amendment that would, would change that? I don't see amendment on the burner right now that would change that. So as of this point, uh, at this point, no uh, hearing. There's, there's, not until the the votes are there. You know, we're going into House Bill Two, which is the main function of uh, of my committee uh, on the state budget, trying to balance that. I uh, think that I would like to present the bill and find out whether or not I have the votes or not. Um, you know, I counties counting is a real interesting thing. Uh, sometimes you can be right on and other times you might miss it by one or two. And I think if uh, I were allowed to present that bill before the committee, uh, I think that uh, with the amendments on the bill that um, I suspect uh, we just might have the votes in that committee. Tom, is that possible you can't have a committee vote on this thing? A lot of New Mexicans want this to happen. Well, they, they do want it to happen, but mm -hmm. you know, Senator Sanchez respects the, uh, the committee process, which I respect. The funny thing for me is, is that it sounds a lot like the Scandera hearings. Uh -huh. Everybody wants a vote, but right. only if it's convenient. That's right. John Arthur Smith has been consistent on this for the longest time, Lana, isn't it? This shouldn't be a big surprise. Yes. I mean, he's very fiscally conservative. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a Democrat. He's from the South. He's very fiscally conservative. He's very concerned about maintaining a very large amount of money mm -hmm. in that fund. We actually tried mm -hmm. to find out how much money was in that fund before the show started. Somewhere between 11 and $16 billion. It's unclear. Interesting. Yeah. But it's Education, a huge right? amount. It's yeah. a huge amount. And the question is, um, the power of committee chairs. Uh, should they have the power to shut down debate completely? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you're, it's a matter of counting votes, why have committee hearings at all? That was my argument for 10 years in the minority <laughs> party. I'm just saying. <laughs> right? That was my argument. So, there you go. so this bill Ten needs seconds. a hearing. Yeah. And uh, to not hear it is to just be inserting yourself as an obstacle to the democratic process. In a, in a, in a one word answer, are, are there enough New Mexicans in support of this constitutional amendment that forces his hand and have a vote here? Not with the committee structure the way it is I in the Senate, so. yeah. but I think that's something that should be called into question. There you go. When it happens, Take a little extra time on the clock there. Year. Sorry about that. Interesting story. Former U.S. Representative Heather Wilson has been appointed to the new review panel of the NNSA, that's the National Nuclear Security Administration. Now, the commission will review ways to improve the performance of the NNSA and help the national labs diversify their mission. Lana, this sounds like an interesting opportunity if we have a local who's at the table talking about diversification of the mission of the labs. Are you hopeful in that way? Or is this just one of those inside beltway gigs that doesn't mean much? You know, I think it could be either one. Okay. I mean, I think it's, it's certainly an inside gig, but mm -hmm. maybe it'll produce something that's beneficial. Right. Dan, well, what do you think? I, I think it's, I, I, and again, not because it's Heather Wilson, mm -hmm. I just think they got such a, a broad brush that they're going to be working with. Having somebody from New Mexico, we're sure. going to be competing with everybody else out there. Obviously, we'll get a better, uh, voice at the table, we hope, with having Heather Wilson there. So I think it's good for the labs. Yeah. What do you think, Senator? Well, some people have said the whole um, agency should be done away with, that it's not very effective anyway. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, whether, it, whether she'll be effective on it is a separate question. Whether the agency itself is effective, mm -hmm. um, I don't I don't really know. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. I've heard people talk <coughs> about that as well. Tell me your yeah, thought here. She knows the labs. She's strong on defense, so I feel real comfortable in her, with her in that position. There you go. The drive home has not been the same for radio listeners on the AM dial. After 14 years on the job, Jim Villanucci, the host, his contract with 770KOB expired last week, and he is out. Now, Dan, could it be that the, the Nooch was a, veering a little too much towards the center? Blowing with the wind of the times, no. post Obama, people were upset with no. him. No, okay. No, no, is, first of all, never mind. But I'm just going to say this: it is 100% <laughs> economics. Okay. I will guarantee it. They're trying to figure out a way to cut costs. I'm willing to bet he was the most expensive voice at the radio station. Right. And I think, as Larry Aaron's was shown, it's not necessarily the person; it's the time slot. Right. And I think they're going to see if that's true. That's mm. true. Your thoughts on this? It's a corporate move. Yeah. Uh, Radio is cutting out like local commentators. Mm -hmm. Newspapers are also. The Weekly Alibi just told all of its local columnists that they mm -hmm. were no longer needed. Thanks for the reminder. Thank you.
I appreciated that. Thank you very much. You got fired again. <laughs> yes, I did. I am the cooler. Again. I am the newspaper cooler. It's terrible. Lana, your thoughts here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this. I agree. This is a corporate move. Mm -hmm. This isn't personal. But what goes missing? He was a big part of the, the political mm -hmm. landscape about setting the tone for things. Is something missing with him gone? I think someone mm -hmm. will take his place. Okay. What do you think about that? Yeah, well, you know, where's, where are people going to talk about local politics? Right. Whether you agree with them or not, you Mexico know, a lot of Democrats focus. really had a chance to listen and, and to right. provide instant feedback. In Mexico. Mexico. That's right. Mexico in focus. We're going to say with TV, not radio, just TV. Now, a bill in the Senate will repeal the state's mandate that diesel fuel be made up of at least 5% biodiesel. If the, if the bill passes, rather, Iowa-based renewable energy group may rethink their $20 million investment in a biodiesel plant here in Clovis. Now, the bill's sponsor, Senator Phil Griego, was approached by the oil and gas industry to carry the bill but admitted he didn't know all the science behind it, Dee Dee. Is this just a bad <laughs> bill, or is he just doing his job as This a, was ill-conceived. You know. okay. This was ill-conceived. He was representing the oil and gas industry in this. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, we, we need to have cleaner fuels, and we have been saying for years that mm -hmm. that will benefit eastern New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And here's the proof, positive, mm -hmm. that they were going to open this factory and, uh, or facility, and now they may not. Mm -hmm. I was at the uh, Roundhouse last week and got, a, got a, a lecture from Lieutenant Governor Walter Bradley about biodiesel and Welcome corn and subsidies, right, and ethanol. What's your take on this? Is this part of the, all the same mix here? Well, I mean, it's tough as an on-the-clock thing. I think these government-mandated mm -hmm saving devices are turning out to cost us a lot more money. Mm -hmm. But I think the response of I didn't read the bill is getting a little old with legislators in Santa Fe. Yeah, I'm going to hold you two guys on that. We're running just a little bit short on time. It looks like the U.S. Department of Agriculture, excuse me, may give the Valley Meat Company permission to open a horse slaughter plant in Roswell. While animal rights supporters and advocates for care and treatment of unwanted horses Supporters of the plant say that humane slaughter is possible here in the U.S. In any case, those other advocates are saying it is not. We don't have a market for this, Tom, it seems to me. We could do this, but as of August, the European Union is not taking horse meat that comes from racehorses and such that have butte and other drugs in them. What are we supposed to, where are we supposed to sell this meat? What's going on here? Well, it's a, it's a lose-lose proposition. Right. You know, who, you know who really wants those kind of jobs? Right. Uh, but then we get selective about economic development and what kind of economic, sure. economic development is good and bad. So, I, you know, if, if you have the horse slaughter plant open up, it's just it's going to have bad news written all over. Reputation-wise, do we need this in the state or is this just mm -hmm. another economic development is initiative? Yeah, I think it's a tough one. It's a mm -hmm. tough one for people to feel good about. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, of course. You know, I just, mm -hmm. you know, Gene, I just, I don't think it's the government's job to tell someone their business is going to fail ahead of time. Mm -hmm. If they've got the money to open this thing up and they think they got a market, we'll know shortly after they open this thing up. Either they're going to have a market and be in business a long time, or they're not. It's not for us at this table to say, or the government to say, we don't think you can sell your product. Mm -hmm. um, but I agree. I mean, I think it's going to be tough to take students on a tour of the plant that's killing horses. There you go. Dee Dee, what do you think of this one? This is not going to happen. I really mm -hmm. don't think this He's is going to happen. Roswell. <laughs> Perhaps not, but... Well, the governor's not supportive. Yes, you know. There was an a article on the blogs that said, you know, Mr. Ed, it's what's for dinner. <laughs> and, uh, no one is going to want Mr. Ed. Do we need the reputation in New Mexico for this? I mean, we'd be like the first place in the country in years to do this. How's it going to make well, us look bad? Our USDA. horse racing reputation, That's our... A good point. our you know, the nuclear waste. Our nuclear, I mean, we yeah, go through our reputation. This is the least of our worries. But our reputation is as a Western state, and horses are synonymous with, with the West. There you go. Can I hold it there? Thank you all. Senator, good to see you. Lana, always great Thank to you. see you. Thank you all. So, depending on when and how you watch us, there's just about a week left in the legislative session. We'll be back next time, just as the lawmaking reaches its peak. We hope you'll join us then. I'm Gene Grant. We'll see you then in Focus. Local Makers Initiative is funded by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people. This program is part of American Graduate, Let's Make It Happen, a public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.